Good morning, Colorado, Wyoming ahead. Here I am, Brittany Otter, staring at you from the beautiful city of Baltimore, Maryland, where I'm just coming out of the Post-Secondary Disability Training Institute, or PTI, the 30th anniversary, no doubt. And my goodness, what an amazing experience. I have so much to tell you, and I'm gonna to try to keep this short, but I wanted to make sure I gave you an update and just shared some of the rich information that I've learned from this amazing conference. But first, here is the wonderful marina and harbor. It is beautiful. So, first I wanna have just a bunch of gratitude for all of the amazing people that I have met at PTI. Uh, we had people from all over the East Coast, of course, Maryland, uh, all over New York, New Jersey. Uh, we had wonderful speakers, but we also had some folks from California. They did travel pretty far. And also, I want to give a shout out to Becky from University of Northern Colorado, who also came. We were the two that represented Colorado, so thanks, Becky, uh, for being there with me. That was really fun. And... Um, I did meet quite a few amazing people. Tracy from Goucher College, Community College. Um, I met uh, Najia from George Washington University, Kendra from the Penn State, uh, the Penn State, <laughs> um, and I've made a lot of connections I can't wait to share with you and bring back to Cali Ahead. Um, and before I move on, I have to say that I don't know if you can see this. This is a Drummond and Woodson, Wood, Woodsma, Woodsum Attorneys at Law water bottle that Becky and I won from the Jeannie Kincaid presentation just for showing up because we were from Colorado and she shared a, a case uh, from Colorado and said to us, now go put out some of those fires, both figuratively and literally that are going on over there uh, and so I'm supposed to tell that to the uh, TSA agents when I bring that uh, full of water to the airport that was her joke for the day uh, anywho so um, in addition to my gratitude I wanted to share a few things that I had takeaways from this conference so many takeaways but just a few things that I want to share with you um, the, the fun thing about the PTI conference is that they structure it over three days. There's a pre-conference the day before, and there's a reception the night before, and we had uh, Ladera Korn, who is a tremendous speaker and advocate, and who is on Project Eye to Eye board, who has done an amazing presentation and, and written uh, a number of books. Um, on learning disabilities. He himself has learning disabilities and has provided a lot of great information to us about what that's like and how to support students with learning disabilities, ADHD, kind of those hidden disabilities throughout education. So we learned a lot from him. And then uh, through the conference, we had a uh, setup where you would go to a strand each morning. So you had two strands. Each strand would meet each morning uh, in the same topic, same presenter, almost like a graduate course that was in three days. So two hour section of time every morning for three days. So the first morning I went to the math one uh, and then I realized Jeannie Kincaid was presenting and went the next two days because how could I not? And then the, uh, the, the other session I went to was on uh, psychiatric or mental health disabilities. Uh, for three days so lots of great information and then they had single sessions for one hour uh, three sessions a day so lots of information shared and so the big highlights I wanted to share from you um, were just a few things um, one I went to a really interesting session with ETS that, that uh, the educational testing services uh, organization that puts on GRE for graduate school students if they want to go to graduate school Students will need testing uh, in recent years. Um, they have a recency requirement of five years, so they said they can be flexible. And they also accept personal statements and have some additional interesting information. Um, I've, I've attached my notes to this, but uh, look at those and see what you think. But if our students are coming in and they don't have any documentation that's recent, we might want to give them more information about that if they plan to go to graduate school. So that was something that I wanted to share with you. 
Um, another thing that, uh, of course, that we always learn and are, are reminded of from Jeannie is that remember that just because a student um, asks for an accommodation and you go through the in interactive process does not mean that it is reasonable. She says that the burden rests on the student to propose an accommodation and to prove it is reasonable. Now I know that a lot of us, uh, we have students that have never done this before and I myself have students who have never asked for accommodations before or have never really been asked um, or had the opportunity to self-advocate. And so we might help them strategize and come up with, with some motivational interviewing uh, those accommodations. And that's okay, she said that's okay. But if a student asks for an accommodation that's not reasonable and they don't give you any information about why it's reasonable, we don't need to prove why it's reasonable. That is their job. That was good to know. Thank you, Jeannie Kincaid, as always. Also, direct from Salome Hayward's mouth, you cannot make it the right of, you cannot make the right of a person with a disability to be accommodated dependent upon the behavior of other students and faculty. She was talking about this idea that students would need to get permission from other students in class for recording lectures and reminded us, no, not for an accommodation. We can't make an accommodation dependent on whether other people want to contribute or not, want, want to do it. Unless, of course, it undermines an essential function of the educational environment, then of course that makes sense. And people brought up confidentiality. But I like that as a standard to keep in mind as we look at other accommodations that come up. Um, in addition, I went to a session with Lori DeGaldo, who is a licensed professional counselor and is an educational consultant for many universities in the East Coast and has done a lot of work uh, working with students uh, with mental health disabilities. And she brought up, and, and a lot of us had trouble with, this idea that when looking at mental health disabilities, it's really important to look at how they are impacted. What is the functional limitation? And does the accommodation match that impact on education. For example, for a student with depression, and this is speaking general because I'm being quick, typically that is a stamina or energy related uh, issue. So extended time on assignments typically is not gonna be very helpful because typically the student is gonna be worn out. It's gonna be a lot to do. Uh, so instead, she recommended broken time. So instead of, for example, extended time on an exam, broken time allows for breaks more frequently with the ability to stop the clock and then come back to the exam. So the student works the same amount of time as everyone else, but gets more broken time to take breaks and recharge and re-energize. Hmm, interesting idea. Again, look at my notes for more of her really great information. And then I also went to the math uh, strategy session and I won for us all. I won an amazing winning at math book from Dr. Paul Nolting, who is a learning specialist and very renowned for all of the work that he does and discussed a uh, semi-controversial or provocative idea that if a student is, is having difficulty in developmental courses in our community colleges, uh, what's you know, and they're having difficulty maybe in pre-algebra or arithmetic. Typically, what he has seen is if you waive those pre-development courses and they get into the algebra or the statistics class, they do, they do well. Um, so why are we asking them to go through multiple repeating semesters of developmental courses that don't help them and not putting them in that college level course to begin with with support. Again, very provocative, right? So those were some of the biggest things that I had taken away from PTI and there were a lot of things. Um, again, please feel to peruse my notes and ask me and, and reach out to me to talk more. But uh, what, a, what an amazing conference. I am so glad I had the opportunity to be part of it. And 
I am looking forward to talking with all of you about all the things that I've learned and for seeing you at the next Colorado Wyoming conference in October. We will be sending out information soon. And as a reminder, shameless plug, dues are due, membership dues, October 1st of this year. So go ahead and put it in your budget. Go ahead and reach out to us and we'll get you that information in the links below. Have an awesome weekend. So good to see you and hope to talk to you soon. Bye.